Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee, and uh, have you missed me? I've missed making these videos. I've been down and out for about eight, nine weeks now with uh, some big time eye problems. In late, actually middle April, I suffered a detached retina here in my right eye. Doctors recommend poking your eye with, uh, with uh, B2, beehive tools. That makes it better. Um, and uh, I had to go through three operations to uh, to fix the eye and uh, I still have a big gas bubble in the eye this is only the second day that I've actually been opening my eye regularly but then last week I suffered a detachment in my left eye um, the detachment in my left eye hasn't actually torn my retina the way the right one did a couple of times but uh, but it's still I'm still kind of shaky on the vision part so I haven't been doing all that much beekeeping I haven't been doing any videos that's for sure but today I'm going to do the autopsy on my urban hive. So uh, this hive died late in March and uh, and we're gonna try and figure out why. Um, so I'm looking at it and I'm thinking there's basically three main possible causes and uh, one is uh, lack of food stores and that's fairly easy to to determine when you do your autopsy. Two is exposure, right? And I think exposure can be broken down into two parts. One, exposure to cold, simply put. Second, exposure to cold via moisture, right? So um, in Toronto here, uh, winters aren't that severe. This winter wasn't particularly terrible. Spring was very long and these are just mid late June are the first warm days we're having, uh, but we still haven't hit summer here. Uh, but this hive was alive until late March. In late March, every time there was a warm day, there was activity coming in and out of the hive. Um, but by early April, it was dead, right? So um, it's not all that likely that uh, that the actual cold temperature killed them. But if there aren't enough bees to form a, a warm cluster or a big enough cluster, that could be a cause. But then you have to ask yourself why there weren't enough bees. So this hive was very healthy going into, or at least very plentiful going into the the uh, the winter. But the one thing I didn't do with this hive, which I did with all the rest of them, is I did not treat this hive for varroa. So that brings us to our third possible cause, which can be disease, right? Uh, mites, varroa, any kind of disease. Um, and I didn't treat this hive because I, it's my, that was in year three, so winter number three of, of, uh, of beekeeping. And I wanted to uh, see how hives did that were treated compared, compared to hives that fared without treatment. Uh, I didn't treat this hive, but I did a mite count, and the count came out lower than the threshold for treatment anyway. Now, here they tell us to treat mites no matter what the count is because it's such a pervasive disease. So, um, and it might but not be the varroa themselves, but it can be the viruses that, that the varroa bring these, uh, these bees. So there are some signs that you can check on. I'm not going to put these under a microscope. I'm not going to send them away. Um, but I am going to look for some signs and see if we can determine what killed this hive so that we can do better next time and help all our bees survive. Um, I went into winter with six hives, four of them survived. Um, so not a terrible ratio, but uh, not my best year either. So let's see if we can do better and get these bees healthy and happy with 40 honeybee. Okay, so the first thing we look at here is the exterior of the hive. And you can see I use this insulated wrap, which I've had a lot of success with. It's, um, you notice the, these markings near the entrance. So that is bee poop or bee diarrhea. Um, and a lot of people right off the bat will say, oh, your bees had uh, diarrhea, which means they had dysentery, which means that that's a sign of nosema and that that is what killed them. Now, I don't necessarily think that's true. And this is why in its most preliminary and simple terms, this hive, I predict had about 50,000 bees going into the winter. And what you can see here, you know, that string of poop is one bee, right? Having a little diarrhea as it leaves. There's another bee having. So if you look at, at this, like this might be the total diarrhea of what? 20 bees, maybe 30 bees out of 50,000. So unless, and if you research it online, you'll see that hives that have suffered from nosema or dysentery usually have like the entire hive surface, the lid, everything around the whole area down and around the hive is covered in much more poop than that. So we'll see inside the hive too though if there's if there's a lot of poop inside the hive we'll see that too. So I don't rule it out but I don't think that just seeing a few poops like that on the outside of the hive 
mean that the hive has suffered from dysentery. Now I have no doubt that uh, ants will be a big, will be running this hive right now. But, and I guess it's unfortunate that I've left it a few months before doing the autopsy. I'm not sure if that'll make a difference on what the findings are, but we'll see. So I use this insulated upper upper lid here, and you can see ants are actually making a nice new home for themselves, but that's going to end. And uh, I've had a lot of success with it. So the the, uh, the wood chips allow for ventilation to come through. I usually put a, a little couple of tabs here that lift up the lid so it allows a little ventilation. And apparently the ants agree with that. Okay, so let's see what we're in for here. Okay. So, not many bees, and I think there aren't many bees because the ants have probably removed them. When I first, uh, first lifted this up to see if the uh, bees were still alive, there was a big cluster of bees here um, that were dead, and you could see that, that they had, had fed on the... Uh, on the sugar so you know you look at starvation look right off the bat and you can see that they still have their their winter sugar here so starvation might not be one of the main causes one of the causes that we're looking at uh, the box itself is still pretty heavy with honey so it tells me there is a decent amount of honey in there and you can definitely smell the dead bees decaying so we'll look in here, and um, again, you don't see any signs of nosema, right? There's no, um, there's no uh, poos in here to speak of at all. And you look inside the, uh, inside the lid, and there's no major signs of it there either. You do see some right here at the front, and this is because this is leading to where the, the entrance or exit was. So yeah, as bees were leaving, you can see they had a couple of little poopy emergencies. But, you know, this hive, you can see, is not, is not covered in bee poops. So that rules out nosema. It doesn't rule out disease, but it at least rules out dysentery as the disease or a disease that might have contributed to their death. So we're going to pull some frames here and see it's actually quite a big cluster of bees here. So you can see bees on all of these frames here. So if it was a small cluster somewhere you could think that maybe it was exposure because there weren't enough bees to keep warm but there's a lot of bees here. So again that might rule out uh, temperature as the cause. And it might even rule out disease because with disease, um, you know, the numbers of bees dwindle. And as the bees die or they get very sick, they leave the hive to die. Again, these there were no bees on the on the uh, around the hive or on the entrance or anything. We'll see what the bottom board is like as far as uh, dead bees. So let's start pu pulling some frames out here and see what we see. These frames started off; they went into the uh, winter as honey-filled frames. So let's see what they are now. There's no honey on this frame, I'll tell you. Okay, so this is what we've got here. So this is a frame that was full of honey, but it was probably eaten by the bees because there's no ragged edges on it and there's nothing there's no signs of it being robbed at all. So that to me looks like they've eaten their stores, right? So the mold, you know, is not too much of a concern. This mold definitely came after fact, post-mortem. So um, it's interesting. So big cluster of bees here. And again, we do see that all the honey in this frame is gone, right? 
So it's interesting. What I found before is that with the with the uh, sugar candy that I leave the bees, usually they eat that first before eating their own stores. As this helicopter goes by. But that may not be the case here. It may be that they had made their way all the way through their their own honey and then started to head up towards the store. See, there's a decent amount of bees here. The cluster wasn't all that small, but there's not a drop of honey. Same here, decent cluster of bees, but no honey. You can see the cluster size there by the, by the mold. That was a good sized cluster. That should have been enough warm-wise to make it through. Now, as far as um, amount of honey, I shop for about 50 pounds of honey per box um, to be the amount that they would need to survive. And this box had that. So why they needed more is a bit of a mystery. But there are a lot of bees on here. Look at that. But, you know, I said the box was heavy when I first lifted it. And I thought it would be heavy with honey, but it's actually heavy with bees. You can see this is probably the peak of the cluster. Be neat if I could spot the queen in here, but uh, you can see there's still a lot of bees there, right? Right now it's just nastiness, which uh, I'll have to deal with. I don't think I'll be reusing any of this equipment because simply because it's been in there so long and it's so nasty. But there's the outside portion of the of the cluster and you can see there's still a huge size cluster there and it's just starting to dwindle now. It only got two frames left. Right, so it was definitely a big size cluster that died with no honey in the box. Which leads me to say it was uh, starvation. Look at that. It's completely picked clean of any honey. So um, take a look here and you can see these are just the bees that have fallen off the frames if I've been, as I've been pulling them off. There's thousands and thousands of bees in this box. So I definitely at this point call it starvation um, as the cause. My main reason being they have absolutely no honey stores. They were eating the, uh, the sugar candy that I gave them. And there was a tremendous number of bees that all died more or less at the same time because they ran out of food. And that is something that a beekeeper can help or prevent. Now, this is the first hive of mine that has died because of starvation, as far as I can tell. And the reason why I'm saying that is that um, the other hives that didn't make it had obvious signs of, of disease and such. So I have to rethink how I, uh, how I look at each hive heading into winter. Um, obviously this hive I thought had enough honey, it didn't. Uh, I gave it emergency stores, but the other thing that, the way I set up this top box... With the okay, so my conclusion for this hive and the cause of death is lack of food stores. And that's really unfortunate. Um, if I would have hazarded a guess before I looked into the hive, I would have thought Varroa. And again, the reason why I thought Varroa was because I didn't treat the hive. Uh, I did test the hive though, and it was well below the Varroa limits. Um, but the reason that why I excluded Varroa was because there was a tremendous number of bees still in the hive, which meant that uh, although the overwinter bees died, there were still enough uh, fall bees to make it through the winter. Big, big clusters in there, big numbers, and that, that should have been fine. Um, then, um, you take out Varroa and you take out parasites because of the large number of bees there. And had there been a, a gradual or mass bee die-off because of uh, because of disease, they would have died outside the hive, or at least most of them would have died outside the hive. Um, and there were just no, there was just no honey in that top box, so it went from 50 pounds to zero. They went through all that. There was still honey in the bottom box, though. Not that much, though. There's only about eight pounds or so. 
that probably wouldn't have been enough for it to survive from March on. And they were getting into the sugar on the top, but they didn't eat all the sugar that I had left them. So why they didn't do that, I don't know, but obviously it tells me that it's more important for them to have honey as their primary source of food than to have sugar candy that we would feed them as their secondary source of food. So uh, what have I learned? I've learned that um, I need to absolutely maximize the amount of honey in the two brood boxes for bees to be able to survive the winter. As I've said, this is my first hive that didn't survive because of lack of stores. So I've learned and hopefully I'll make it so that it doesn't happen again. And hopefully you've learned something and maybe it'll uh, help you save your bees. So thanks for joining me at 40 Honeybee.